What up? What up? Good morning. Good morning. T-M-T-M. There you go. My calendar seems a bit small now on the screen. I can't see. Uh, Tuesday. Oh, it's just Tuesday? My God. Yesterday felt like a week. Okay. I guess it's just Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, January 9th, 2020. Four, 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 four. <laughs> Look at that. Another beautiful day to have a beautiful day. I got my co-host in the house, OSF Mando. How y'all doing today? GM guys, one day, one day closer. One day closer or, or same day. Or same day, yeah. Or same day. I mean, we're, uh, we're getting, we're definitely getting closer here. Mando, how are you doing today? Doing great, man. Doing great. Lisbon's a little bit, a little bit rainy, actually. Oh, um, last Ooh. couple of days. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's fair of you to say. I feel, I feel rugged. I feel rugged by this kind how of many, I wonder how many days a year it actually rains in, in, in Lisboa. Like, I, I don't think it's a lot, right? I think it, they say it's 300 days of sunshine. Uh, so it's high. And it's generally warm. It's really, it's the warmest European capital. So you get, as in like during the winter. So it stays pretty warm. Um, but yeah. yeah, I've definitely been rugged the last couple of days. It's too much sun, isn't it? 300 days. just Yeah. It so sucks. Not enough variability. You've seen sunlight for like two months and you've got another three months to go before in May. Well, well no, four or four months to go. It's really sunny today. It's very, very sunny today. I uh, I can't say the same here. I uh, I can't it's say the same. One degrees, but <laughs> apart from that, it's right it, here. There's something nice about like a nice sunny cold winter's day. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's the what's the uh, the football quote? Like, uh, have you played a rainy night a cold, in uh, cold Tuesday night in Stoke? Cold Tuesday night in Stoke. Yeah, that have you? But have you? But have you played a cold Tuesday night in Stoke? Because it's you 11, know what? It's Eleven degrees here, but you that's cold. That's wow. really cold for Lisbon. Um, I don't yeah, know how cold it is outside. Here is negative eight Celsius right now. Um, but that's that's like rookie numbers. Like honestly, January 9th, like and it's just it's barely even snowing and like barely even cold. This is like this is bullish. Like this is uh this is a sign that the ETFs are around. Bullish. Speaking of which, today on the show, <laughs> today, today, market updates, moves, yada yada yada. You already know the drill as usual. We're gonna talk about Jim Kramer. Uh, you know, reversing the market. So we're, we're, we're glad that Jim Cramer is now, uh, you know, t calling for a top on Bitcoin. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, uh, you know, uh, Mando, given that, you know, you know the minutes, you write the minutes, you're, you know, big news guy. So you've probably seen it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. These topics are done off my minutes. I'm pretty sure I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Hey, hey, Chad GPT. Hey, Mando GPT. Find me the five biggest topics to talk about on the show today. No, nah, I'm uh, just kidding. I'm just listen, listen, listen. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. Uh, of course, getting closer to the ETF. So sorry about that. I promise you, at some point, there's not going to be any ETF conversation. But right now, that is what's happening in the space, and we have to talk about it. Uh, so, and we're we're going to be joined by Stacey Elliott of uh, of the crypt actually uh, to uh, to come and talk to us. You know, kind of like the latest. Saw so a tweet yesterday about like some. Potential delay, blah blah blah, like blah, you know, all that good stuff. I saw, uh, I saw you quote tweet that, uh, Ovi as well. But uh, so we'll get the actual, you know, news and see what's going on on that front. Uh, then NFT update. We promised it. We have to deliver it. Uh, we're gonna go through Solana, Bitcoin, uh, ETH, NFT. See what's going around um, the the space and whatnot, and uh, see what the show brings us. Without further ado, why don't we get this uh, this part party uh, started? uh today so should I, who should i go to first you know who, who's feeling more like up to i mean man i feel like yesterday you cooked that's uh the intro. who is the man macro daddy of the land can you dig it yeah so we uh we had a very very strong day yesterday um bitcoin hit 47k i think 47.2 at its high um, you saw ETH go all the way up to 23.50 area, Solana. Solana actually peaked this morning, went all the way up to 102, but just a, a very, very strong day. It bounced back in a bunch of different um, alts as well. Uh, Bitcoin dominance did rise. We are heading towards 55%. Actually, we're at 55% right now in Bitcoin dominance. If you bring up the Bitcoin dominance chart, it's, it's been a wild um, start to the year. Uh, we started the year at 51%, uh, roughly. Yeah, the lows are around 51% and we're up to 55%. So a huge, huge move. Um, I think ETH 
BTC is at its lowest rate in in multiple years at this stage. It broke through um, kind of a multi-year uh, resistance point, um, and <clears throat> it definitely feels like Bitcoin is people are looking trying to to get exposure to that. We said that yesterday. We said, look, we think Bitcoin dominance earlier in the week could go up to you know 55, 57 percent. It could even go as high as sixty. I think in this world, um, I'm not like we're about to see a bunch of different ETFs launch. There is not a lot of uh, Bitcoin on exchanges. You could see something wild happen. Um, but yeah, that that is an unex not unexpected move in Bitcoin dominance, although up to fifty five percent. But at least this was a rally which everyone participated in. I think what had been happening before is Bitcoin had done nothing and all the alts had gone lower. This um this was Bitcoin going higher and everything kind of following, but at least not following as strongly as Bitcoin was. Um, in terms of the uh, the stuff that really bounced, Solana went above one hundred two. I mean, that hit eighty five yeah. on on Sunday night. Um, that that was so that was a reversal of, of about twenty percent there, um, which is which is pretty wild uh, in in just a couple of days. And then you saw all the sold memes also have a big move up. So bonk with yeah. all of those. So some DGen activity kind of came back, um, and then. You're continuing to see some of the more Bitcoin-related things outperform, I would say. So some of the BRC20s, some of the some of the um, L2 stacks included, um, some of the DeFi protocols like Rune kind of bounced back quite strongly. Um, and then it was it was it was actually some of the newer coins. So like Tia had a big run back up. Um, you had Sui kind of bounce back. So it was. It was kind of broad based, but the only thing that's really held this morning, because Bitcoin did briefly drop again on some just wobbles around uh, headlines around the ETF. Wobbles around, I like that. Just Bitcoin just wobbles around. <laughs> that's that's yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, and it, it stuck around. Uh, I think it did down to like forty six k, and everything puked, and then Bitcoin's back up to to forty seven k now. Forty five four. Wow. Okay, maybe I missed that, but yeah, um, that was a pr pretty big dip wow. on nothing. Really, it was, and news that really came out yesterday that the SEC was coming back with some additional comments. The the alpha on that is that there's not going to be delay; it's going to continue um, seemingly. But people, you know, people got unsure. Um, and again, you've just seen Bitcoin dominance grow and since that move. Solana stayed above 100, but most other things are lower, um, including ETH, which is kind of continued to to, to bleed back, bleed uh, lower since since that uh, initial move lower. Yeah, so. Uh, where we are in terms of of um, the ETFs? Nothing. I'm actually gonna hold on. I'm I'm gonna bring Stacy up now then uh, to 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 chat about the ETFs. So, but go on, go on, Mando. Sure. I I don't really think there's that much new. Uh, but maybe Stacy maybe Stacy can bring it in. Like it feels as though we're still on track from where we were yesterday. But there's been yeah a couple of headlines around it. Yeah. So it, anyway, morning. GM. Morning, guys. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Uh, I'm in the middle of moving, so please excuse the very bland background. <laughs> I, love, I love that you have the same microphone as, as all of us. Um, oh, yeah. I had to dig it out of the box that it was packed in. But, yeah, I'm here with my proper podcast microphone. <laughs> Stacey, before you go off on the ETS, because I know that's your shtick, you know, why don't you give us a little introduction for the for the, for the the FOMO Hour listener of uh, and, and Rogue Radio? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a J school reporter. Like I got started at a newspaper back when newspapers were still a thing. Um, <laughs> I've been covering business and finance for a long time, like 10 plus years now. I was at fortune for a bit. Um, I was working over at the street for a little while, writing a newsletter about institutional investing in crypto. Um, and then I got poached to come over to decrypt, which was lovely. It was a great day. <laughs> nice. Must be nice. Must be nice. Must be a lot of fun. So, so I, I'm told that you've got some. You know, you're quite the alpha for ETF stuff and all this finance talk. So, why don't you, why don't you give us the TLDR that Mando was gonna get into about like what's going on? We saw a tweet yesterday. I know Ovi had some comments to make on on X. I'll get to those after. And like, and and some people saying there was like some form, and then someone wrote a tweet saying like, oh, like it might get delayed, so it went viral and things. You know, as usual, like Mando said, wobble around. So, what's what's actually going on right now? What's the latest? So the latest, latest is that there's been a whole new... So we saw a bunch of new uh, updated S1 registrations get filed yesterday. Um, and then this morning, we saw a whole new round of them get filed this morning. Um, so basically, what's happening is that, like, you know, everything gets turned in. The SEC is looking over everyone's forms and saying, okay, hey, we need you to fix this before we can proceed. 
And whoever these poor people are at all these firms who are kind of filling out these forms are basically working overnight. Like at some point, I want to talk to one of these people who had to work like four days straight on this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I've seen some people saying that this might be like a delay tactic or something like that. But the deadline is the deadline. They've still got to do something either to say they're going to delay it or, you know, they're going to approve or reject by tomorrow. Um I don't know. They're working so fast. I don't know that this is really a bad sign. That might be the dip that you were talking about earlier, Mando, that we saw in the Bitcoin price that everyone kind of panicked and thought, oh, shit, everyone's filing some more stuff. Maybe this isn't going to happen. Um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not so bearish on it like that. Like, I still think we're on track. It just seems like everyone is working around the clock. Like as soon as stuff is getting filed, it's getting reviewed. Comments are going back and they're just trying to get everything in order. So, yeah, it's just more filings so far from what I've seen. I haven't read all of them just yet because they just got filed this morning. I think a lot of it just has to do with the fees and everything that everyone was talking about yesterday. I think all that got sent in the first time yesterday. And so now the SEC has had a look at the way everyone plans to handle fees and has had some feedback. Okay. I saw, I, I just saw that like, going through James's uh, uh, X while you were, you know, talking about this, that there's been also some fee cuts, right? So the fee, like the, the fee war started before it even started, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, I think, at least three or four of them that are going to, like, launch with, like, a 0% fee. Um, basically, until they get to, like, I think I saw for some of them, until they get to, like, a billion dollars um, assets under management. Others are going to do, like, for a certain set amount of time, whichever one they hit first. Um, the thing, basically, is that BlackRock came out and said, we're going to be at 0.3% fee, 0.2% introductory, like, until they get to $5 billion. Um, and that basically kind of just set the line for where everyone else needs to be under if they want to compete with BlackRock at all. Um, so it's really competitive. It's the same thing you see like with, it's funny, like I compare this kind of like to the Costco rotisserie chickens, like the really cheap chickens you can go in and get. Like they want to get you in the door. They want to get you invested in the fun with these really low fees, but they're not going to last forever. Yeah. So these aren't meant to be like sustainably like low fees. It's just please sign up with us first. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting, actually. So, do you want to like? I guess since you're 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 already like uh, on that, do you want to like maybe break out down to people like what it actually means, like to like the fact there's an ETF for the people that are like outside of the space? Because like I feel like yeah. everyone talks about ETFs, including us, all the time on this show. And you know, sorry to our listeners if if you're not digging it, but it's important, right? It's happened at the moment. Um, but you know, a lot of people also just like. Don't maybe don't understand, and every, we all get caught up in like the hot, the big talk, and like the price action. And like from your perspective, like how would you explain that to someone? Like the importance and like what it means for the average. Yeah, person? I mean, it means like, like literally for me, like you know, we have like retirement accounts, so like I can allocate some portion of that to like a Bitcoin ETF, and so now some portion of the money I'm saving for retirement will get exposure to and kind of go up and down relative to what the Bitcoin price is doing. Um, it means that you'll have a way to invest in and get exposure to Bitcoin without having to buy a wallet, manage private keys, worry about who's going to hold on to that Bitcoin, like worry that you're going to wind up like that one dude who like lost his private key and there's like tons and tons of Bitcoin somewhere in like a huge like landfill. Like these firms that are applying to actually register and offer the ETFs are kind of saying, okay, we'll manage all that stuff for you. Your shares will go up and down relative to the price of Bitcoin. Um, if you want to sell, you are just going to get cash back. That was one of the big sticking points with the SEC. Um, it's actually not so bad. We might see in-kind settlement later. Um, but the whole thing with the fees and like it being an ETF means that because you don't have to manage any of that stuff, because you're not gonna have to worry about who's holding on to your Bitcoin, like they're gonna worry about that. Like you do have to pay a fee. These people have to be paid for the fact that they're managing your Bitcoin investment on your behalf. Um, so that's kind of the trade-off. So like either you're cool holding your own Bitcoin, you do that and you don't have to pay anyone to manage it, or you're like, okay, I want to get in, but I don't want to have to have a hardware wallet. So then you pay someone else to do it for you. I, uh, I I I love that. And then I guess I have like one more question on that, just quickly. You mentioned the in kind like settlement and stuff. Like, what what does that mean? Um, so basically, people are going to give these firms, assuming this gets approved, cash. They're going to create a share, and then they're going to use that cash that they've been given to go out and buy Bitcoin. But then when you want to redeem your shares, you can only redeem those for cash. You can't redeem it for Bitcoin. So you can't say, okay, here are all my shares. Give me the Bitcoin you bought with the cash I gave you. Um, 
in some other types of ETFs, like you can go and say, okay, I'm redeeming my shares, either give me the cash or give me, you know, the basket of stocks that you bought with my yeah. cash. So like, that's common in every other type of ETF, like different asset classes out there. Because this is such a new asset class, what I've been hearing is basically that like they still think this is pretty risky. Um, and the SEC is kind of looking at it as a way to manage some of the risk that's going to kind of enter the financial markets to say, OK, we want to limit how many different people are going to have to handle actual Bitcoin throughout this whole process. So by doing settlement in kind, it means that like I think it's really only the issuer and the custodian who are ever going to have to touch the Bitcoin but it's limiting the number of firms that are going to have to worry about managing Bitcoin. Um, I know I've seen the Bloomberg guys say basically that they think later this year we might see in-kind settlement so that you could buy these shares, uh, redeem them, and then you get the Bitcoin. But we're not going to see that at the jump, I don't think. That's, that's definitely not happening yet. Okay. Well, Stacy, that's a great breakdown. How do you how are you feeling about this? You hyped to what? Like, is this, uh, you know, you said yeah. you've been doing this for 10 years now. Like, this must yeah. be this must be a cool moment, huh? I mean, like, we've been waiting for one of these for 10 years. It seemed like it wasn't going to happen for a long time. Like, I, I'm not going to say anything you guys haven't heard before. Like, once BlackRock kind of got in the game, it seemed like, okay, we're going to have to take this seriously now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Can you but, just knock on wood, please, for me, just for my own superstitions? Yes. Mm. This is how I, I mean, if you want. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's too much, like, you know. We yeah. Gotta, I mean, the crazy thing for me is, like, come on, can we please just approve this already so we can like cover other stuff? Because I feel the way you guys kind of feel, which is that like, all right, this is exciting, but just do it already so we can cover other stuff in like the news cycle. Because otherwise, like every day that this gets dragged on, like it's the same round of like, okay, what teeny tiny thing has changed since yesterday? Yeah. And how are we going to like make this that form, sound new that and interesting? Form. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now Gensler is posting like he just tweeted again at the same time as yesterday is actually uh, a guide to like a safely invest in cryptocurrency uh which is by the way like o ovi was mentioning that in chat it was good it's actually a good good guy but has he rugged soul yet or <laughs> <laughs> yo that, you know what's funny bakunas talk about genslish and i don't know if you saw what i attacked both of you on this morning oh did you see that what i attacked gensify he was saying uh eric bakunas was the etf senior analyst that we had on the show last friday um was writing writing that he doesn't think that he's it's gonna get gensified like he was just like <laughs> <laughs> she was mentioning that. What do you think? Say, so we, we're getting we're yeah. getting the fight or not before tomorrow? I don't think so. I really don't think so. It'd be wild for them to have like offered all these different comments and things only to turn around and say, okay, never mind. No. <laughs> like, I would be shocked if that happens, but I mean crazier things have happened. Yes, indeed. Some crazy things have happened. So, Stacey, thank you so much for coming on this morning. Honestly, that was fun. Hopefully, when we have more market stuff and not just ETFs, you can join us for little yeah. segments like that. I would chat. love to. I appreciate yeah. you, Stacey. Good luck with the move. Yeah, thank you. Good luck with the move. <laughs> See ya. Later, guys. Well, there you go. There you have it. Your ETF, uh, your ETF uh, updates. Besides that, I mean, look, um, I want to talk about today. I actually want to talk about some stuff. We're going to talk NFTs and stuff, but I want to talk about a tweet uh, that OSF sent out and that had the had the studio a little heated before the show. Like before we hit live, like this is why we were a little couple minutes late. You know, mm. conversation went there. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. But, uh, but, uh, Ovi, so I'm gonna go to you here. And if you want, of course, chat me on the market stuff. But you, you tweeted something out saying, What is the best Bitcoin beta trade? And, uh, of course, you know, as, as Bitcoin's, you know, um, the main center of attention at the moment, we just spent, you know, a bunch of time again talking about Bitcoin ETFs. And that's been gaining the, all the attention in the space right now. We talk ordinals, talk BRCs. I mean, Ovi, what do you think the best Bitcoin beta trade is right now? I don't, I don't know, but it was, it's an interesting question to ask because, you know, if you ask this question two years ago, people would say ETH, people would say other alts, they, because there wasn't anything on Bitcoin, right? It was Bitcoin was just Bitcoin, and that's what it was used for. And if you look at it now, we have BRC20s, you have ordinals, you have other like um, Bitcoin related tokens out there. So now it's like we're in this, you know, for the you haven't you've never really had this in crypto before, where there's actually higher beta tokens out there that are kind of related to bitcoin um and so i was just to be honest with you it was like it wasn't really like a hey tell me what to go buy i'm gonna go buy it now it's more yeah. like a, i was just curious to see how people would respond to it <laughs> and because it was a very like i just got like tons of things on ordinals yeah some some brc20 shit coins and whatnot um 
and it's just very different to what people would have said not even two years ago probably even one year ago it's just very it's very different so um that's what i was I asking it's, and it's, it's a good question but yeah it's like what can you buy um right now yeah I think, I think if i'm honest if you just wanted to take more risk on bitcoin you would just take a levered bitcoin trade because things haven't yeah, really been so ex exactly. excluding le excluding leverage yeah, yeah. Um, and, and when, 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 when mando says that just for the people listening you're probably talking about something like a 2x like we're not like we're not he's not talking like keyboard monkey 100 yeah. 100 yeah, I'm, I'm using 2x yeah anyway yeah. not you but i mean for the people like don't be no because now you'll be telling people like the best for, the thing is if you're looking for leverage. bitcoin to trade yeah like you and you want to be safe you want to have very low leverage obviously bitcoin moved down what 70 percent still from, from the high <laughs> Um, I feel like <laughs> up until the start of this year, that was Solana because uh, it felt like it was that and Bitcoin used to run at the same time the mm. most. Um, and then that kind of broke down at the start of this year because Solana obviously just went too parabolic and then has had to consolidate and went all the way down to like 85 and, and it kind of lost its direct correlation even as Bitcoin went higher. The, the, most, the, the most obvious correlation I feel like right now is probably Stacks, which is like one of the best known L2s right now on uh, on Bitcoin. Over recently, that has been running generally when Bitcoin has run. But for example, today, Stacks is down 5% and Bitcoin is up. Um, there's still this idea that Bitcoin dominance going up hurts most alts. I would say in terms of the buckets of stuff that you could look at, I think, yeah, Ordinals feels like the hot thing. And there are there are both NFTs um, and you're seeing some of those get sweeped. Like they saw ordinal punks get sweeped. Um, and then there are the BRC20s, of which there's like three different forms of BRC20s, I would say, right now. There's like memes or like, I would say, OG coins, let's put it that way, um, of which there are a few. I think Audi's probably the, the best known, but there's SATs uh, as well as like a few others. There's bridges, which are like very popular bridges from ETH or... Um, even other chains onto uh, Bitcoin, which is um, which is stuff like Mubi, M-U-B-I is probably the, the best known. And then you have kind of a just like a, I would say a smorgasbord poo-poo platter of utility-based BRC20s <laughs> that are trying to bring... Uh, it's called a poo-poo platter of BR Bitcoin ecosystem coins. Of, of which the utility is is still a meme i would say to be proven and should be questioned and that that stuff can move around a lot and that's stuff like tracks or track um what about rats any any of you on rats rats is that first bucket it's it's what just a it's just a shit coin um <laughs> it was after sats was made they made rats although it's quite okay. uh, it was quite, I it was quite early one. if you, if I, you like, I like on, rats if you go into unisats right now um, you, the Unisats wallets, and you go onto there. Uh, 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 there. Yeah. Oh, Hold on. Yeah. And you just click BRC20. Um, yeah. You there? You there? I'm here. I'm here. Hold on. Hold on. You, I, I, it's, I changed computers. I don't have any of my history like saved. Just hit the BRC20. Uh, uh, here. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And then here. So the, um, the the OG ones, um, Sats was very early, so um, that and that had the, probably the biggest community behind it. There's been there's been other ones like there's OXBT, there's Sats here, and then I think Rats. Yeah, I don't know when Rats was made, but it was definitely early. Um, I don't think Rats is on Binance yet, but Sats definitely is. But like a lot of these will move on to yeah, yeah. So oh, actually, that was quite late then. Yeah, it wasn't earlier compared to the rest. Like when you look at it, or well, two days yeah. afterwards, it looks like. Um, whereas Audi was, yeah, was, was was that first was that first morning. So you get, um, yeah, you get like a mix of different things. But then there's other stuff. Like for example, a lot of the OG Bitcoiners are into Rune, which is a Thor chain, um, which is like a native way to swap Bitcoin assets. It doesn't involve wrapping Bitcoin. Um, and there's another protocol called Flip, which is which is similar that's come out recently. So a lot of like Eric Voorhees and a lot of the OG Bitcoiners mm -hmm. are, into, yeah. are into into Rune. They have they introduced a burning um, mechanism recently, um, uh, which is linked to their lending protocol. And 
So if you speak to Bitcoin as what they own, like this is like a very, yeah, see, they've got like tap root. This is a very Bitcoin led DeFi um, thesis. And it sees huge volumes, absolutely huge. It's one of the biggest. Yeah, uh, Rune, I mean, I definitely like, I think a lot of people have heard of Rune, right? If you've been in space, like even for a little bit, it's one of the tokens you yeah. tend to hear about quite early. So like people w could argue that if Bitcoin has this, renaissance of utility then like rune could be very very big and like the big thing for rune i think this year is is to onboard different chains so really it's it's a it's a it's a basically a bridge slash swapping mechanism between ethereum and bitcoin because but that ecosystem they're going to try and bring in solana is going to be the big one um this year so the whole the rune community wants solana basically to be added um and that's what they're going to try and do so huh. uh, I think that that's, but, but yeah, like that's another way you could play it. There are a couple of plays like that, but there's nothing perfect. Like if you just want to isolate Bitcoin going up, you kind of just want to have leather Bitcoin. But like, if you want yeah. to play the ecosystem, the BRC twenties, things like rune. Um, and then I guess things like Solana ETH are going to be the, like the, the next best um, in terms of, in terms of like beta. Yeah, that's true. I mean, what do you, what do you, what makes you, what makes you want to look into that, right? Like when you think about like just going back to OV, like when, when you, when you look into like the Bitcoin eco, for me, that like what made me want to look into it is like I realized, and I think uh, Moon actually had a really good tweet about that um, yesterday. Um, it was something around the fact of, um, I, fuck, I got to find it again. But uh, he was saying that people are about to realize that they're underexposed to like Bitcoin. And they're going to come and try and make Bitcoin out of like NFTs slash you know, ordinals and same, you know, with like the BRC 20 ecosystem and like the, the, the coins that, you know, are in that eco, you know, to stack more. And I think that it's very similar to what happened in 21. I mean, I'll speak for myself. It's what got me really into it is like through NFTs to be able to, st to get, you know, accumulate more coins like Ethereum at first and yada, 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 Solana beta trades to, Stack soul at the end of the day. That's, that's the only goal. And on Bitcoin, you know, only a trade at the end of the day is to try and stack as much Bitcoin as possible. Going to the bull market, realize that I'm not underexposed to Bitcoin, but what do I see? Ordinals and like something that's starting to pop off the same way it's popped off on ETH. Same exact like um, uh, comments made about it. It's too clunky. It's too slow. It's too expensive to use. The same stuff. But at the end of the day, like, you know, um, it's, uh, it's uh, it's it's just the cost of being early, right? And so I just feel that way again. Like I'm not gonna lie, when I bought my first ordinal, and the thing went through, and then I waited, and then I got it. It was a whole ten minute like experience. Like I was like, let's go. Like I loved it. You know, I love. You know, like you you shopping in the you shopping on the luxury chain. You know, what do you expect? You know, when you go buy a fucking so you know so a bag at 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 a luxury store, you know, they take your they take their ma damn merry little time to go pack it up for you, and then you receive it and you're so happy and you walk out the store like hell yeah, I got something nice, you know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought a luxury bag for myself. You, you ever bought a luxury bag for yourself, OSF? Luxury no, bag? No. no. Yeah. For your for your for your loved one, you for sure. I mean, that was with Ovi when he was shopping for for his wife for 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 a nice purse. You know, like you bought one for your for your wife one, right, Mendo? I think so, yeah. Right? Right? I think so, yeah. I I, think, I can't remember now, but yeah. <laughs> so cute. You yeah. know, because... <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. No, but that's 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 something I'm noticing. I don't know. What do you what do you think, Ovi, about that, right? Because, like, you've been pretty heavy ETH, and, like, you know, you've been you've been talking ETH a lot, but I want to make sure that, you know, <laughs> what do you think about Bitcoin, Zika, and what makes you want to look into it? Yeah, I mean... I'm not just an ETH. Like I'm in, in a few different things. Um, Solana. Yeah, which I I think um, I think that's the one I have more comfort having more size on, given the activity on it versus other chains. Um, like I have stuff on other chains as well, but it's like a, it's not really big size. Um, but I think um, it's just one of those things where, like, look, this Bitcoin ETF is going to get approved, and stuff is going to rally. There's a good chance of stuff rallying on if they if they do big volumes. So. You want to get more juice than BTC because, like, yeah, if like Bitcoin goes to 100k, um, yeah. that's a big move. That's like a that's like a 40 percent move, right? Whereas, um, you know, been, if you're a tr true crypto DJ, you're not trying to make 40 percent. You're trying to like fucking do 3x, 5x, 10x more than that. So it's like, okay, well, what's the Bitcoin B to trade? And in the past, that has just been like altcoins. It's been buying different altcoins, and to an extent, it still is. Like, I, I think all the L1s will go up with Bitcoin. I think Solana will go up. I think 
say will go up, injective will go up, AVAX will go up, all that stuff will go up by more than Bitcoin will if we get this thing through. I think that I think that's definitely going to happen. ETH seems to be trading technically very poor right now, but if, I, I do think that will reverse. And I think this is the um, the the long consensus. Well, the long view has been um, the view for a while has been that the day of the approval will be the lo- will mark the lows for ETH Bitcoin, and that seems to be happening right now. Like ETH Bitcoin is now down to zero point four eight. Which is the lowest we've seen for since like um, mid twenty twenty one. So that does seem to be happening. I think that I think that will reverse when, when the narrative shifts. But um, it's just like so. That's like I think that's like one way to play. It. I think I you know just buy Solana or like buy even just fucking buy Avax. Whatever if you're just doing it for a trade. Mm-hmm. And then the question is like, well, is it does it make more sense to buy like one of these you know like a BRC twenty or ordinals and that kind of stuff? And um, that's like the newer like the new school method of doing it and i don't know like i'm not i'm not sure how i think they'll all go up but i'm not sure if they'll act uh like how differently or how better they'll act as as bitcoin yeah. beta to some of the other l1s yeah. that's the big question i think you can get wrecked like true, that. right i think it's absolutely wrecked thinking like that like if you think yeah. for example like i owned rune i've owned rune for a while but it hasn't gone up this year it hasn't yeah. gone up at all but it went up 5x in the second half of last year like they are they are beta p- trades, but they don't happen at the same time. So, like, if you think yeah. if you think it's suddenly going to be like, oh yeah, my my altcoin, which is somehow related to Bitcoin, is going to do well, yeah, it, exactly. it, it can be yeah. very very different timing. So, like, jumping ship to get a bit more risk in a Bitcoin related thing, um, I think you have to have medium term time horizons rather than just like this is going to perform. Yeah, like Rune, yeah. Rune in the start of December was at seven. 0.5 basically and now it's at five or 4.8 um and bitcoin's only done another what 10 20 percent higher since then so i uh it's it's very they are very different trades you have to want to be in them for themselves just owning some random brc20 and hoping that bitcoin's going to bail you out or it's going to go up higher i think you can get really destroyed do you guys think i have a question for you too um uh because i think it's a good it's probably the question of the moment and of course, nobody knows anything, and I think you're really right when you say that, Ovi. Like, like nobody knows what's gonna actually happen. But like, I think it's worth just like what, like I, you know, they're saying like, you know, when they they're saying that ETFs is gonna trade like the next day of the approval, potentially, of course, right? Supposedly, right? Yeah. Um, so when's the approval Thursday? Potential uh, trading. Like, why would anyone think that any of this would see somewhat of a huge sell news event? when it's going to be trading the day after it's actually the news is out what why the question is why do people think it's going to be sell the day? yeah i just think people are, people are people are so uninformed like you know it's only now that you know these bloomberg lads have made such a big mark on, on our space that people are They're celebrities now bro yeah people are starting <laughs> to follow them just, <laughs> they just, love it bro they love this thing. Like, like, <laughs> it's only now people are starting to listen to them and follow what they're saying but like these these boys have been calling it for six months. Six months True. ago, True. they said the probability of it getting approved was ninety percent, and it's taken six months for people to realize that BlackRock applied for their ETF in June of last year, right? So, like all the information you have right now, apart from you know us being further down the line in the, in the process, has been out there for months and months and months, and people just have faded it or just didn't do anything with it. And we had that pump in the initial news, and then just people just selling Bitcoin for ages because whatever they thought it would go right down to the wire. And, and obviously it has, but um, I think, you know, people who are still out there calling for delays don't understand the process, don't understand how it works. They probably yeah. spent less than one minute looking into it. People out there um, uh, calling for reject- rejection, I would say the same thing. Like the, the evidence is, the, the researched evidence is extremely in favor of it being approved yes there is some tail risk but to go out there and say i think it's going to get rejected is is like you know complete lunacy um and and then the, the third thing is like you know sell the news thing now that's that's a bit more of like a difficult thing because we have had a massive run up um you know we've been rallying um solid pretty much straight shot from like whatever it is like 30 30 k's like all the way to here and, and yeah even in the last couple of days we've had a big rally and it's only reasonable to think that um people will take profits and people will take profits but that's why i don't think like the approval or rejection of it 
is going to be like the big, well, obviously if it's rejected, it's going to be pretty bad, but like the approval of it is going to be like the big thing because you have trading on the next day and that's going to be the most important. The big question we're all asking here is like all of us who've been long Bitcoin right now um, or whatever, long crypto and the portion of people who want to take profits, is that sell pressure going to be bigger or smaller than the buy pressure of the ETF when it comes and the, and the, and the derived demand it creates for Bitcoin? That's the big question. And so we try, that's why we need to see the volumes. That's what we need to try and find out. And we don't really know that until we see the volumes. Now, the evidence for volumes seems to be that it's going to be high. There's rumors that BlackRock are going to put in $2 billion. Um, I think it was Vanek or Valkyrie. I think it was Vanek. That's, they have $400 million lined up already. Yes. Um, yeah, hey, so you, Vanek, you think, intern, like, Vanek intern yeah. is the best intern in the ETF game, right? He's the only uh, intern in the ETF game. But yeah. that's, 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 the big, that's the big question I think we have to ask. And right now it feels like, you know, it feels like there's probably not many profit takers. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some, but like people are seeing all this stuff um, and maybe there'll be like a small bit of profit taking, but I think any dip that you have there, you're meant to buy. That's, but, that's I mean, what I think. It, it looks to me like how, how, how we're looking too overextended is like the fear and greed index hit the highest level since 2021 today, 76. Yeah. You have you have high open interest, but in one specific spot, it's CME, which is like the trad fi part of trading Bitcoin. On the other hand, you've had a consolidation there of Bitcoin for like a month at around 42, 43K. It took a long time going up and down. So this is just... This is up since then. Funding looks low. It doesn't look high. It looks very, very low compared to what we what we saw like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And open interest isn't high on on most of the other venues. It's really just on the on the on the CME. Um, so it feels like we've had a long run, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily like peak frothy frothiness right now. Um, if it felt like if the ETF had come. A couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago before we had that flush to 40 and a couple of the other flushes we've had recently that could have been a much worse scenario in terms of right we could we could go down to like 38 this feels like we could head maybe down you, like there is no doubt in my mind that you will be able to buy bitcoin at a lower level than where it is right now at some point over over the next week like there'll be one wick that takes us down to like 45 or something like that and then it will get bought but i do think that you've got to be prepared that like there will be a lower level just because the volatility is going to be really really high um and but i don't think it's one where like oh everyone pukes and this goes to like 35 like this this feels different than that this feels like they've got a lot of capital behind it this could be this could arguably the, be the most successful etf launch ever in terms of volumes like yeah. we could easily blast through the levels that you, you you've yeah. seen before it's when you start seeing stuff like that like yeah it, this this is going to feel like it has actual trad fight momentum to it um and we're not in a world where there's no more catalysts after this yeah. like we have a world of etf catalysts coming for other assets namely eth you have the halving coming up for for bitcoin you have the whole solana build out with with, with, with stuff like fire dancer you have um you have a, I guess, a bunch of like RWA D pin sort of stuff, which is like helium's going nuts right now. Um, like, there's a lot of different things that are starting to pick up. I would, I would argue that the utility based stuff has yet to like fully get to scale. But in terms of like the halving, Fire Dancer, the ETH upgrade slash ETFs, those are those are decent ones. Like this, this isn't just like oh my god, the ETF's done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Listen, we'll find out more later. Let's talk NFTs. All right. Let's 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 get into NFTs. We owe it to the people. All right. For for what it's yeah. worth, by the way, uh, shout out to Benny for coming on yesterday because a lot of people seem to think that Ovi's back. I mean, we're, we got a message from BL8 saying Bull OSF is back. We got another message, and look, I'm not making this up. I'm putting it on the screen. Look at this. Uh, we got NFT Bros saying OSF tune in bullish today. Um and so a lot of a lot of a lot of people are. are, are I was the, I was never bearish. I was just painted as a bearish. You were no no sorry. You, you were not bearish. I've, you were cautious. I'm not always bearish. cautious. You can never be too complacent on any no, in, right. in any aspect in life. And for what it's worth, you're absolutely right. However, you know, you know there are other times where we can be cautious. 
uh, but that's just me. <laughs> when, you know, I, I, that, when it gets when it gets like, Max Greed, that's when I you want to be a bit more cautious. But Salama hits eighty eight. Really... You said Gary Gensler was about to rug it. That's that's that's. I, that was, I, did, that not, was... I did not <laughs> say Gary Gensler was about to rug it. You woke up in the middle. I'm gonna, of the night. I don't know if I can slap you, boys. That's how it's <laughs> you know what's crazy is that we literally like we're talking, and then you said good night. And then you came back two hours later with uh, <laughs> <So> Gary. <laughs> <80 laughs> and you even tweeted that you're going to bed. And like three hours, and you was funny, it was like 10 p.m. for me. That was so late for you. And and it's just like it was hilarious, you know, like, oh my god, that was NFTs. That was, let's, get, let's get into uh, NFTs. 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 All right, you want to start? We don't want to actually sorry. Let me not go here. Let me actually start on DGENs, as a matter of fact. Uh, so let's start, you know, let's start with ETH. Let's start with ETH. Uh, and the Ethereum uh, ecosystem when it comes to NFTs, because now we have oh. to cover ETH BTC soul. All right. So what I'm, one thing I saw is this tiara was stolen. You know when there's that meme of like an NFT that's sold for free, uh, but yeah. you know it was paid like 200k for. I have to say a tiara sale for 75 ETH. Um, right. I think during the show, like before the show started. Um, I have to say, uh, was uh, it's been drifting a little bit lower. ETH NFTs in general have been drifting a little bit lower. Even yeah. the Azuki pump on the back of the of the token. Azuki went above seven. Um, yeah. and now it's back below six. The vast majority of that has been has been dumps, huge dumps on blur of of like Azuki mm. assets. But that's been across the board. You're still seeing you're still seeing very high volumes. So like um, if you can see on DGENs, even like Ethereum volumes are just like much higher than Bitcoin and Solana right now, at least for just just for NFT collections. Of course. Um, and but most things have gone lower. Pudgy Penguins is still like rock solid. Mm -hmm. uh, at 10 and a half but board apes, are, board apes are down 23 i know uh, but did you see what happened though with the with the farmer that removed all his again, uh, this is what i mean like it's that's i think that's more a symptom rather than like a cause like things are just heading lower um and people are starting to take a little bit less risk so azuki um mutants board apes um even d gods like everything that had like brief pumps has, has kind of come back down even CryptoPunks down to 53, which is down 5%. Like normally CryptoPunks just do not move. Remember well, were... actually, what's it in US dollars? Sorry, let me see. Because of course, that's dollar, what this is what I mean. In dollar terms, I think ETH going higher has meant that they've gone, they've, they've slightly, but this feels a bit more than that. I don't know if you agree, but this feels a bit like, it just feels a little bit, I don't know, tepid. I mean, out there's there. so a much going bit. on, right? Like I saw, I saw CryptoDog tweet out that like Pudgy Penguin's going to lead the NFT cycle, this cycle. And my response was like, Pudgy is positioned to be the leader this cycle for like NFTs and it definitely for ETH NFTs, right? But now it's different because it's more competitive because you have Ordinals and you have Solana ecosystem. And like, yeah, for example, like Mad Lads on, on Solana, that's a direct competitor. It not, sorry, yeah. it's not competing in terms of, sorry, sorry, it's not a direct competitor. I, I, I'm taking that back. It's, it's, it's in terms of like the floor price, it's still competing in floor price, right? Let's put it that way. But, you know, obviously aware that they're, they operate in completely different businesses uh, here, but you know, do you have something like that? You also have ordinals. A lot of these, like you saw no monkeys recently go to like uh, 0.25, you know, BTC, of course it's lower right now, but still like 0.25 BTC is a lot of money, right? It's like 12. Well, yeah, we, can, we can get into the differences, but yeah, I'm just, just ETH right now. It does feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. They are losing some of the, um, mm. some, some of the shine, but like two pudgies equals one board ape. That's kind of crazy, right? Two to one is crazy. But Two to one. are you surprised? Are you surprised? In a world where Pudgy Penguins used to be what? Four years ago. Pardon me? Yeah, like a 20th of a board ape at one stage, right? Like Probably board apes were. If you look from the point where Cole still had the project at 0.02 and what board apes were, I'm curious if someone in the audience could tell me what the what price was a board ape when penguins Pico, Schmico, cement, rock, solid, bottomed. Like, I'm actually curious, but I, it's, it, it means nothing for us with the stats. It means nothing. I'm just curious <laughs> to see what the... You know, obviously, you obviously board eights have had different uh, airdrops in that period, but like two to one ratio is wild. Um, given, given, I don't know what's been happening, um, well, the history of like the board apes, but now, yeah, like, would you prefer to have a pudgy penguin or a board ape as your profile picture? I mean... Let's just leave that question unanswered. I think um, for yeah. for <laughs> good call for ordinals, um, it has <laughs> seen it has seen decent volume. Like what we do on DJs now, we like remove the BRC twenty, so it, it's seeing that helps. 
Um, exactly, which kind of mocks some of the data on some of the other sites. But Bitcoin Puppets has been the main one, which are just like, <laughs> I know, we, I fucking love these things. They, um, <laughs> I like that the communities just got behind them. But yeah, they're up 3x in the last week. Um, 0.03 roughly area. But the rest, like Node Monkeys has dipped below 0.2. They got reflipped by the frogs. They obviously had, but they've seen a lot of rare sales still in, in Node Monkeys. Volume here is what I'm looking at. Like the Bitcoin puppets and Node Monkeys are dominating volumes for a long time. It's a, by a lot, by a lot. Yeah. And for a long time, that was just the frogs, right? Like it was, it was yeah. frogs and it was bitmap. Um, but now it's uh, it's really just Bitcoin puppets and, and no monkeys. And bro, Bitcoin's forty seven thousand dollars too now. Like people need to keep that in mind when you look at these volumes. Like yes, we're gonna Bitcoin add that was on just four the... k yesterday. Like it's we had got a we printed a three three and a half thousand dollar candle yesterday, and still these things were were trading. It's kind of wild when you think about the world of ordinals. And yeah, beware of, of catching a, a a a pump on Bitcoin because you're you're the denominator. Just so y'all know. So fun fact, the other night when I bought my first puppet on FaceTime, I was like so excited about buying a puppet because they just look hilarious. Um, Vanessa saw them. I'm like, babe, do you, do you want, that's my signal. Usually. I'm like, babe, do you like these? First reaction, 0.1 millisecond answer. Babe, these are so cool. Can I have one? Comes behind my computer because she loves picking her NFTs with me. And she goes, and she goes, um, oh, wow, it's just 0.01. And I'm like, <laughs> baby, 0.01 orange coin. How many chairs do you sit on, baby? How many chairs do you sit on? <laughs> Anyways, what do you guys think here of uh, of this? So is this going to be like something? Like, curious to hear your thoughts. I mean, Ovi, like, what do you what do you think? Like, right now, we're looking at this ecosystem. We've been covering it since the inception, right? We had Casey on day one when it first came out. We had the Bitcoin Mac guys. We've had Udi multiple times. We have again on Friday. We have Bit got on stage, so I'll go to you in a second. But watching from the outside, uh, Ovi, as someone who's launched a successful NFT collection on ETH. Right for the last two years, red guy, you guys have been like you crushing it. Like, what do you what do you see here in ordinals? Yeah, I think it's um, it's they've been around for about a year now, and I think they've had moments of gaining like popularity, and then like they, they got quiet again. But um, it does feel like they're here to stay, and does um, you know, what you need for people to more people to come into like an asset class is like loads of the existing people making tons of money on it, basically. <laughs> I think that's what's been happening. Like people made a ton of money on like node monkeys. People are making money on puffets now. I actually looked at like the price changes today, and every ETH NFT was like down two or three percent. Every Solana NFT was like also down like 10, 15 yeah. percent, apart from Mad Lads. Um, and you, you go and look at the Ordinals page on on DGen's website, and everything's up like 50, 60, 70 percent. So um, I think that causes more interest to to get in. And I think obviously like the UI is uh, the UX is like very clunky, and I think that's a complaint of people. But you know, I, when since when did like crypto native people really even care about that, right? Like most people have gone through the effort of like get setting up a wallet, having a ledger, like transferring money from a sex, all that stuff. Like it's already painful, and I think people are generally willing to go through that pain to get stuff done. Um, so yeah, like I think um, I think I'm constructive on it. I think I'm more constructive on it than I was maybe when we spoke about a few a few weeks ago. I still don't think there's any like good projects on it really like that are interesting from like a art or a culture standpoint. I think Bitcoin Pub is probably the first one where I was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Like I really like I like that. But pretty funny. Bro, else, like, came out my bags. You know, there's something like Ovi hates our bags. It's, but it's just, it's just when someone's like, so, 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 when someone's like, oh, just loads of ordinal punks got swept. I was like, great, like a fucking derivative of crypto punks is like trading up on like that's that's the sort of thing that it's will turn. Crazy. That will turn people off, people like myself think, and possibly other OG. Yeah, like no one. I actually agree with Obi. Yeah, like monkeys, no monkeys was the first one where it felt like original. If you actually saw Solana yeah, did their own, version, which is now topping the Solana charts. Frogs, when you start, credit, right? The, the frogs got, got to give them some credit, right? Like they were also yeah. Okay, high. so look, these are these are what Obi's saying is hundred percent true. Look, you're starting to see some more original stuff come out. Yeah. Sure. Start to see original gen art start to get big on on Bitcoin orders, a bunch of different things, including like the golden golden ratio. That's that's done very very well recently. Um, so it feels as though original stuff, and all that all that really needed is just like creatives to move onto that onto that exactly. chain, exactly. and that is beginning to happen. Right. So so you're like, starting you're, to see like original stuff. It's not just like if your goal, yeah. if, if your goal as an ordinals spokesperson is like I want to get um 
you know, the biggest collectors and whales into ordinals, right now the biggest collectors and whales are people who probably own CryptoPunks and art blocks and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, if you're like, hey, yeah, hey, man, like, I know you own like an alien punk, but you want to come buy like an ordinal punk? Like, I'm going to tell you to fuck off, right? But that's always but how it say, starts, right? Like, Solana was the same. Yeah, Remember this? Yeah, no, so we're going to say, hey, like, do you want to buy like this? You know, if there's if there's some more original stuff on there, I think that's what will drive that. That also does well. I think that's what that will drive people. And I haven't up until now. I just hadn't really seen it. And I think like I think node monkeys look cool, there's but a, they're not. Okay, there's original. Like, there's original stuff. Uh -oh. Hold on, hold on. First of all, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> here he is. Uh oh, uh oh. Hi, Riff Benny. Cash. Hey, Rift Cash is. Uh, pr uh, project. It's a, it's, a, super... it's a small collection, right? It's not a big 10k collection. Correct. Of cash. Correct. It's not a 10k collection. It's it's a small art collection. I do agree with you that they need to be more original. I do think back that the best project that has come out that hasn't really sold much yet is is Shrooms because I think it was original artwork under a thousand k inscriptions. So to me, like that's that. I do agree that we want originality here, right? So. And the puppets are are something that's new, so like I don't disagree with you on that. But like, if, there's definitely a lot of ways to look at this. Like, there's people who look at the t sub ten thousand to be important. So it's not about what even the art is, but the inscription number. Also, because I believe that they're working on like that you could do things with inside the inscriptions. So the lower number you have, the better, and things like that. But I would say that there is original artwork that has been out there, like between Rip Cash's swarms and mm. Shroom Toshi and stuff like that. I I would say that the hoops that you have to jump to get to do it makes me more bullish on it, on the fact that like it's harder to get done. Like when you had to get a, I remember when getting a moon cat was like the most r ridiculous way. Like it wasn't easy to get a moon cat, right? It was the same way like when you had to buy BTC in 2000. 13 it wasn't just like oh yeah i'm gonna go buy btc it was like it was a process so all of those things to make <laughs> to make it harder i think actually is bullish but i want to let one thing it's very important okay what's up Benny? you ether keeps asking for utility 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 finally this 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 comes along bitcoin puppets and they offer world peace world peace they are actually giving a real utility and everybody and everybody's fading it this we finally have utility uh, wait, i don't think it's being faded NFTs. i don't I think, think it's being, being faded clear. right this is world peace like what else can you ask for with what's going on the tunnels being built yeah, in mean, israel and the tunnel and the tu and the tunnels are being built in okay, Brooklyn. okay Brooklyn. let's take you to bed pops let's let's <laughs> We need to have world peace everywhere in New York, in the Middle East, and that's what puppets are going to do. We so do we need, need world to peace. accept that. Yes, I, I agree. Can we, can we get your favorite puppet because I've seen some good ones. There's some great ones. You saw the one that sold I, yesterday for 0.85 BTC. No, that was, yeah, that was a good one. one. I I have some of my own favorites. I have Let me a, show you mine. I have a Bitcoin. I have one that has like um, a ketamine shirt with a Bitcoin staff. Yes. I bought this one. This is the K money. Like I literally oh, bought K money. Good. Look, look at the state of that. <laughs> but I think my my favorite one is that there's also a smaller project this guy this did guy. called called Opium, and I bought one of those. And <laughs> mine, this guy, this pop, this puppet holds a QR code up, and if you scan the QR code, it takes you to another ordinal. That all it is is somebody inscribed a fart sound on on Bitcoin. What? I don't think you get better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I'll, I'll post it up here. So Big God, what see. do you think of that? I love it, man. I mean, Opium was one of the first ever uh, collections I minted on Ordinals back in March. And I remember everyone going crazy in, in that Discord trying to sell that stuff OTC and continuing to post that fart over, over and over. For Oak, if you get it, it'd be funny to for you to play it. That's... That's great. Okay. Well, look, this is like, you know, Bitcoin. Some people see Bitcoin as the future of like decentralized finance. Some people just describe fart sounds with the amazing art of the puppeteer Fu uh, on on blockchain. Uh, there you go, Ovi. That's like kind of your answer on like what's the best Bitcoin beta is like there's two sides of the curve, you know? Yeah. Well, I think, <laughs> there's I think for Oak. Left curve to the very right curve. I love that. <laughs> I, You know, for Oak, I think um, so I saw... Weird. I saw Ovi's tweet on this earlier. I, I think it's a really interesting question that I was asking sort of yesterday as well. Is like, 
uh, you know, usually we see post run up of, of Bitcoin a pretty uh, sort of simple prediction that some of that money will flow into to all. Of, I don't. I don't think it's as simple this next cycle. I think um, what you're starting to see really on you know at least the Bitcoin side is you know Bitcoin runs up you're still putting your money back into the Bitcoin ecosystem, which I think is still is still being faded to, I think, a, a really interesting degree. I think people don't even re- really know how, I think, large now Bitcoin as an ecosystem is. Not just with JPEGs, but but of course with PRC20s, but, but even more so, like, you have bitmaps now that are probably around two to $300 million market cap. You have, Damn. you know, you have rare sats. That are probably at like a five to six billion dollar market cap, right? You're like pizza sats alone are, are probably a one to two billion dollars. And like there's the not, stats. you know, I don't think I don't think DGENs is tracking that. I don't think Crypto Slams is tracking a lot of this stuff. And you know, so, DGENs is does it for NFTs. They right, do, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I think like that's all I'm saying is like I think that there's multiple, you know, little subcultures or ecosystems on Bitcoin now that are behemoths, but no but, one knows about them. Do you um, know, but my only am I my only con- Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say my only concern with that big god is this. When Ether realized the whales decided that and realized that if they pump more Ether into their ecosystem, that they'll, their Ether will be more valuable, right? So that's why they created, you know, first they did ICOs and NFTs and DeFi and all that, right? So Bitcoin, I get the idea now. It's like, okay, let's create a better ecosystem that has more value into it. So when it's worth three, four, five trillion dollars, we can look back and say, well, two trillion, the, mar- the, the ecosystem is already worth two trillion. My only concern, to be very honest, is that uh, Ether had their whales back this, right? If you don't, see, if right now I'm looking at all of these um, ordinals that are trading, it feels like this is a lot of Ether people from Ether NFTs and Soul that are kind of going over to Bitcoin. I haven't. You know, I tend to, I tend to really I disagree. I think, I you, think you, the majority feel, of, oh, yeah, I think the majority of, of honestly, this this run so far, uh, Redbeard. I yeah. think is not really Western led or sort of Ether led or Soul led. I think it's Chinese or sort of Asian led. Chinese, it's Chinese. Yo, yeah, I, I think it's Asia's buying. I, you know, Asia's buying. I keep Literally. hearing this. Yeah. I, but I'm even sorry. if that, even if that's the case, and don't, I, I'm not saying that's not the case. But what what happened in Ether with NFTs to really make it explode, right? I don't disagree with you. Is the bigger whales bought stuff for like six million dollars, four million dollars? When I see Michael Saylor, who's not against this, I know now turn around and say he buys a shroom or an, or a known monkey for like $4 million, then I think you're talking about how you're really going to create a lot of fervor in this market. Right now, it doesn't, I just don't, it doesn't feel as, I feel like there's a lot of Bitcoin people involved, but it wasn't, you don't have, you don't have the whales. And to me, the whales in Bitcoin are probably like 10x yeah. the whales in Ether. Yeah, of course. That's some um, that's you that's need, next level you, money over there. And you, and you need, and you need those people to like, to like buy into this and show it like when, 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 uh, board apes were selling, I mean, you know, Mando and OSF can tell you, but there was like board apes selling for millions of dollars or, or buying the stupid, um, you know, like the green stuff, whatever, or, you know, th- these guys were spending so much money that those large buys pumped the rest of the market up. So I, I, of I know we're, I know we're early and I'm not saying that, that that won't happen. Yeah, but, but I guess I do, you don't see that in in the sales that have happened on, you know, you go to early inscription numbers with I think the highest sales so far has been like almost eleven Bitcoin on inscription number eight, and then of mm-hmm. course to the node monks you're seeing you know over three Bitcoin right or have we seen I think two to three Bitcoin on on certain sort of you know aliens for that collection? aliens yeah yeah so and that's without with the without sort of maxi support right. Yeah. Agreed, but I mean, you, I get, you want Max's support. Yeah, I mean, look, it's totally. going to happen. We'll see if it happens. We'll f- see if it doesn't happen. Um, you know, Mando, Ovi, do you guys think this is going to get support from the from the oh, from the BTC one hundred percent, one hundred percent. You're going to see you're going to see big people start to move into here. Like all it needs, it's what, never what, just to bring it together. Like what Ovi said is right. Like we're starting to see more and more culture happen because I think more and more creators are moving. You're starting to capture the imagination of like the broader community, like. With some of these collections, Node Monkeys, I think, was the first to like really do that this year, and then you start to see a bit more of that happen. I think as soon as that happens, people start to value culture at crazy levels. Like they then they become Veblen goods, and you could see crazy high sales. So like, I'm not going to put a lid on where 
some of these things go. We said that said that before, and that'll just draw in wealthy people who want to. And I think Sotheby's are doing like yeah. a ordinal sale already. Like all this, they are. Shit. I mean, they they sold those shrooms there already for for quite a lot. Like Bohana's Bohana's yeah. working, bro. Devil works hard, but Michael Bohana at Sotheby's works harder. Let me tell you that. Uh, <laughs> he's grinding. He's grinding on all chains, bro. You know what I mean? I love to, I love to see that. Honestly, you know, Ovi, you strike me as someone. And then I just saw the time. I'm gonna. Uh, and the show here, but you strike me as someone who would buy like a rare sat, and I mean that in a great way, by the way. Like you, you strike me as the guy that look into like, like an inscription number, like fucking crazy, like mint inscribed on Satoshi's. Like I don't know, that's kind of like you know, because you got autoglyphs, you got, you know what I mean? I mean in a good way. It's a compliment. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I think that stuff is interesting for sure. I would agree with that. You know, middle, like I, I personally think. No, it, honestly, it, it, I, call me crazy. Call me crazy. We should talk about this more. Like we should talk more NFTs and talk more NFTs because clearly that's what the people want. But like when you tell me that like a sub one thousand subscription is worth something, like if that's what like the thesis that's they're trying to validate on there, half a bit like point seven up to one bit Bitcoin, I could take a risk. I don't have any, but like when I look at that, but then like. If the yeah, thing valid is gonna suck, but like first thousand, maybe, a lot of people say ten thousand because of ETH and NFTs, crypto punks, all that stuff, that culture. But I think sub one thousand would be the one I try. What do you think? It's got to be something good on sub one thousand, right? It can't yeah. just be some random shit that someone's inscribed. In my opinion, I mean, like, we should have think... that toilet paper roll that was running around. That was glorious. Like that gift was crazy. I think there's two elements that make an NFT or a piece of art or anything really very valuable. One is having historical value and the other is having cultural value and i think only having one of them doesn't get you to crazy heights so like just because it's sub 1000 but it's just like a piece of shit I mean, not <laughs> even a piece of shit something something a bit better than a piece of shit because a piece of shit could be quite like good this, like this like yeah. uh but a headbutt in 2000 yeah something like that like unless someone was able to really meme that and make it funny and make it very cultural it's not gonna be that valuable compared to something where it's like Oh wow! Like for example, if someone like puts a pixelated bored ape as one of the, the sub one thousand things, right? Like that's not really you can't pitch that to. to really a question. Well. Yeah, I'm saying that. Inscription number two, thirty two BTC. Yeah, that's cool. Like that, I reckon that's probably worth a lot. Like, but it's listed like, for thirty two Bitcoin, and I think once it received an eight, like half of that in in a bit. Yeah. See, what's interesting though is like it, it, it to some degree is it, it does matter what is is inscribed at that level, but also you could take it even further. Like if you end up owning inscription number two for whatever price, you can then reinscribe whatever you want on that on that sort of same set, as well as as you know, that could be the parent to your collection. So like maybe if you do buy inscription number two, which I think is the parent or the parrot gift, um, you know, maybe you do a whole parrot collection. Um, and I think that maybe people value or end up valuing that because the parent is is number two, and maybe you can give away that number two inscription to one of the lucky holders. I don't know. I, I think that there's a lot more value in it than than you know than just the number as well. Yep. I I do agree with Ovi though that sorry OSF that I do think the art will make a difference. Yeah. I think it's going to be a mix of both. Now I'm not saying that sub one keys and sub ten keys will run. I think that just because the nature of how we're all degenerate schmucks here that it will but i think that for what ovi's talking about long term and like having that real value to it i think that the art matters that's why again i like if you ask me if i'd rather have a shroom or a rock it's not even a question to me shrooms are created the art's new it's fresh it's never been done before uh you know i have a moonbird inscription like under 4,000. It's just a copy of a Moonbird. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I, I agree with Ovi. Like, I can't see yeah. how that is exciting. But, you know, I, I, but I do think the bottom line is, is that just don't, and I keep saying this, just don't fade this. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, don't, yeah. don't, don't be in a situation where you're just like hating on something and then not, not like taking, taking the time to understand it. Just like dive deep. Like, there's artists that are doing this. I know that there's, plenty of artists that are coming out with stuff that are that are doing this the right way and they're use, utilizing yeah. the bitcoin uh narrative and chain to make this even cooler so that's so that's the most important thing and last thing is puppets bring world peace again there's nothing more important right now that we need than world peace i love that and you know what you're absolutely right and with that you know what that is a great way to end here uh, because we did go over time 
you know, pray for world peace, pray for, uh, you know, the ETS to finally get approved so we can stop, you know, going back and forth on it in ping pong and see, you know, Bitcoin wobbling in the words of the great Mando uh, <laughs> around uh, this. And with that, with that, with that, we'll see you all tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for another episode of FOMO Hour on Rock Radio. Let's go.